so I wanted to make another video that builds on the series that I've been doing, um, showing how to make really cool images of kites in flight uh, with LEDs that are mounted on them to create uh, light trails using long exposures. So uh, if you go back to the last video that I posted, it shows a lot of how to bring the photos into Photoshop, stack them up together, and then start working with them. What I thought I would do in this video is actually start from the other end and start with a finished product and show you kind of how I got there. Because uh, I thought that might uh, help explain some things that weren't entirely clear in the other video. So there's going to be some steps that we're skipping here. Uh, for example, I'm not showing how I import the photos into Photoshop. Uh, what I would typically do is bring them in and uh, then I would uh, go over here and uh, blend them using the lighten blend mode right here. Okay, so select, selecting them all and then lightening them like that in order to permit only the lightest pixels to uh, pop through. Um, instead, what you're seeing here is all of the uh, layers that I have at the end of the day. So after I'm done editing, uh, this is what I've got left, which looks really complicated, but it's not as complicated as it might seem at first glance. And I'll try to show you what I mean. Um, first of all, um, uh, just to recap, uh, if you might, might want to go back and watch the other video that I recorded before you watch this one. So this is uh, a final product that I'm, I'm looking at right here on the screen. And, and you've got all these layers over here. Well, what, are, what have we really got? Um, even though it looks like it's, it's a very complicated image, I've really only got four layers that involve pictures of uh, the kite actually in flight. Um, so uh, just to quickly give you a sense of, of how they're stacked together. So let me toggle some of the layers on and off. So this is one of the shots. And you'll notice that um, down here there's a, a transparent area. That's because of, of all the masking that I've, I've done uh, in the different layers. And sometimes you get those transparent areas if you're not careful. Um, uh, so, but just try to ignore that for the moment. So uh, that's one shot. Here's another shot. Okay. Here's another shot. And this one I had to manipulate a little bit more because it wasn't quite in the right position. I had to, to uh, adjust the size of the image and move it over a bit so that it would fit more in line with the, the swirl over here and that they would kind of line up together. Oh, here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm turning on and off the hue saturation adjustment layer that I had applied to it. Um, and I, I had added this adjustment layer so that I could change the colors of just this uh, image because I wanted it to kind of stand out from the other shots. So you can see that they wind up all kind of blurring together otherwise. And so to help to, to kind of create some more contrast, um, I added this hue saturation adjustment layer as a clipping mask. So a clipping mask just applies the adjustment to one layer that you have it attached to or clipped to. Um, and you can tell that it's been clipped because there's this little arrow icon down in the corner uh, over here. And the way you uh, create an, a clipping mask would be to start with an adjustment layer. So I'd go over here to the adjustment layer uh, panel and I might select a hue saturation um, layer. Oh, and, and it, it automatically turned into a clipping mask just because uh, I'd already done it with the layer before. It, it, it sort of remembers your, your settings. But um, so for example, here here's an adjustment layer that is not uh, clipped to anything. If I wanted to, to make it a, a, a clipping, uh, I could select the layer, right click, and then go up here, create clipping mask. Um, so that applies this adjustment to just one layer. The other way to do it is to go up to uh, the clipping icon here, okay? And that will turn it into a clipping mask. So there's two ways to do it. 
Okay, so I had uh, that image. This layer here is, is a layer. We've got that one again. We've got this one. And then finally, we've got this one, which is um, a little complicated in terms of how I created it. So this is, this is pretty much the original shot. Uh, let me remove the mask that I've applied. And, and you can see that, that I haven't actually uh, eliminated any kite movement in it. What I, I added the mask for was to eliminate extra stars. And this is uh, one of the problems of taking multiple long exposure shots, stacking them together using the light and blend mode, is that you're going to wind up getting multiple stars repeated over and over and over again. And that's a little distracting and, and uh, not really a look that I'm going for. So I wind up adding a mask so that I can mask out the duplicate stars from the sky. That's, that's kind of time consuming and tedious, it can be. But um, uh, this is the result. So by adding that mask, I wind up eliminating a lot of duplicate stars. The, uh, the other thing that I've done here is I've adjusted the hue and saturation in a complicated way where this part of the shot is actually desaturated, but this part of the shot is uh, still in color. So this is how I did that. Um, uh, what you can see is, well, there, so I've got a, a layers mask here that increased the contrast. So I had um, uh, adjusted the mid uh, tones up here and the highlights. Uh, in order to create more contrast in that part of the image because um, otherwise it winds up being a little too faded. You can see that. So that makes it pop a little bit more. And then in this uh, adjustment layer, the hue saturation adjustment layer here, what I've done is, um, so here's without it, you can see that, that this part of, of the image is in color originally. And what I've done is um, I've added a mask uh, and desaturated part of it. So uh, if we click on the left image here on this little icon there, we can see the adjustments that were made. So uh, I, I desaturated this whole image essentially by dragging the slider over here, right? And then I used this mask over here and then I masked out um, the adjustment over here. So by doing that, I was able to keep this part desaturated, but then remove the desaturation over here and return it to color. Uh, so if I disable this layer mask, you can see what I mean. It would otherwise be all desaturated if I hadn't done that. But because I did do it, um, I masked that out, we returned the color back to it. And uh, you know, real quick, if you're not real familiar with masks, what you do is you, you select the brush tool um, and then you select either black uh, or white in order to add to a mask or remove from a mask. So to add to the mask, I would um, have the color in black and then paint over and you can see it brings the color back. Okay. So the only other uh, 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 layers that I have in this image uh, are this layer, is this layer which uh, just has the lights showing down here. So you can see that um, I've masked out, I've added a mask that masks out almost all of the rest of the image. And the reason why I did that, let me disable it, is because this actually is a kite image where you've got uh, a kite being flown over here, but um, it distracts from the rest of the of the composition. And so I wound up actually just masking it all out. You've also got duplicate stars again. So by adding the mask, you eliminate those. So we're going to bring back the mask, eliminates duplicate stars, eliminates that kite, but keeps the light which is shining across the field here. Now this, this light is not something that I added. Um, this was actually uh, uh, an accident. What happened was that there was a truck that was driving by as I was flying and the guy in the truck had a, uh, a spotlight mounted on his truck and he decided to turn it on and shine it in the direction of the kite so that he could see what I was doing. 
and and so what you're seeing here is is the spotlight shining across the field so that he can see what I'm up to and um, I decided to keep it because um, uh, I thought it would help to create a, a nice highlight uh, to the ground. Um, one of the other changes that I made to it is I changed the color obviously so obviously it's not purple to start with so I did that by creating a hue saturation clipping mask here and if we turn it off you can see that actually yeah there so the light is more you know yellow like you would expect from a light uh, but what I did if we select the panel over here is we can see that I changed the hue of that layer um, and you can rotate through and change it to whatever you want and I also changed the saturation level um, of that image um, you could desaturate it you could make it even more saturated um, I wanted a kind of bright purple streak going across I thought that would look kind of cool and um, and that's pretty much all that I did to that layer the final layer that I've got is down here and this is a background layer so this shot is actually just you know a, a dark shot of the sky with the trees barely visible in the background there and then I've got um, you know a dark field here basically um, so that's so basically what you're seeing here is, is just that shot um, the the background shot I did a little masking here and that's why there's some some uh, transparent stuff popping through but it's basically just um, a blank picture of the field and that's intentional um, uh, I try to get a, a, a sort of an empty shot of my background whatever I'm doing just so that I've got that on hand so that I can use it as a background so that you know as I'm masking and masking and masking that um, I don't wind up with uh, you know transparent parts uh, like you could see here you know you don't want that so by having a, a background layer then I'm able to help ensure against that um, uh, I, I do have a little bit of transparency there because I did have to add a, a little bit of a mask to this image actually but um, it doesn't you know the point is that that you want to try to uh, have one you know blank background shot in your pocket so that if you need it you can use it um, that's pretty much it so uh, the only thing that I'm that's missing here are all the other shots that I would have originally started with I would usually have like you know a dozen shots that I import stack together and and then I would just start experimenting with turning them on and off and seeing what they all look like um, when they're on and off and seeing sort of how I think they could all fit together in some way that that looks neat so like this is a layer that I wound up not using um, and you can see you know it's a shot it's just another shot of the kite um, but I wound up not using it because it just doesn't it doesn't add much to the final shot it's actually kind of distracting um, and complicates things so uh, I don't use it okay so I've gone through and showed you all of the all the shots that I was actually uh, stacking together and how they all fit together and how many elements there are you can see that I've got also a lot of additional adjustment layers that I've added um, some of these are important and useful some of them aren't uh, what, I, what I do is I, I may start by adding an adjustment layer because I intentionally am trying to change some element of the image some color or whatever uh, the contrast or something but sometimes I add adjustment layers just because I'm curious to see what the effect will be so I'll just mess around with stuff sometimes and see what kind of effects I get so, so like that's that's what I was doing up here um, these are uh, adjustment layers that are based off of uh, color channels so to show you what I'm talking about if you switch over to the channels panel up here um, you've got the RGB and then you've got red green blue each of them uh, can be a mask and so what I might do is on, on a Mac you would uh, command click on the image here so command click green will select um, the green channel for this whole total stack of, of images then I'd go back to layers and I would create an adjustment layer maybe a hue saturation layer maybe a levels or a curves layer and it would create a, a layer and a mask that's just affecting the green channel 
And so that's what I did um, with, uh, with this uh, layer right here. So you can see if I turn it on and off, you can see that I was tweaking just one channel of color. And actually, I don't remember which color I'm, I'm messing with here. Um, and if we zoom in closer, you know, you can see a little better, I think. Um, looks like maybe I was messing with red here. I'm not sure. Anyway, so uh, uh, if we select this, um, you can see that I was messing with the contrast here. So I, I maxed out the contrast. Um, but it, it doesn't have much of an effect. It's, you know, I, I was messing around with stuff and it helped a little bit, but it's not a huge difference. Uh, we've also got uh, a layers mask here that's based off of a channel. And I, I clearly, I, I had messed with the, uh, the mid-tones over here. I skewed the mid-tones to help create some additional contrast, but it doesn't create much of an effect. Um, this levels layer made a big difference. And I don't remember which channel I was working on. That might have been an RGB channel. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember what I was doing here. Um, but uh, I, again, was messing with the midtones. And that had a big effect and helped to kind of uh, create a little bit more contrast and decrease some of the brightness of those midtones. I've got a selective color layer here. Selective color is uh, over here again in, in the uh, adjustment layers panel right here at the bottom, selective color. And selective color gives you a lot of precise control over manipulating specific color ranges. So right here we've got the reds, but you could select any of these other color ranges. And then that's my cat meowing in the background. Um, and then you can start tweaking them from there. Um, and here it's not going to have much of an effect there. You can sort of see it. Yeah. Um, so again, you're getting precise control over specific color ranges there. It's sort of similar to the effect that you can get from a hue saturation adjustment layer, but even more precise. So here in the hue uh, adjustment layer, I've, I've adjusted the hue up here, and I've also boosted up the saturation a bit. And this is layer. This layer, like all these other layers, is applied to the entire stack of layers below it. Uh, these are not clipping masks. Um, you can see what it looks like without that layer. Okay. Um, and so I have other hue saturation adjustment layers that I've applied to each specific uh, uh, image as a clipping mask. And, and again, some of these are more necessary than others. Some of it is just me sort of messing around with stuff and seeing if it has much of an impact. And if it does, then I, I keep it. And maybe if I don't, then I just ignore it. Um, uh, so you know, you can see that, that it's not actually that complicated. Basically, what I've done here is I've just selected a few shots that go well together. And then, um, and then I've done some messing around with uh, the colors and saturation. And yeah, I've done a lot of masking um, in a lot of ways, and that's, that's probably the most complicated part. Um, so sometimes I'm masking to eliminate duplicate stars. Sometimes I'm masking just to, to simplify the image a little bit. So what can happen is, is that when, you, when you've got a bunch of these uh, kite shots stacked up, uh, it can get really busy and kind of insane. Um, there's just so much going on, so many, so many layers of, of light um, that it, it's, it, it becomes sort of just noisy and it's hard to see what's going on and it's, it's uh, I think, a little distracting. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll mask in order to simplify the shot. So for example, let's take um, like uh, this shot here. I added a mask to it. Let's see what it looks like without the mask. Okay, so you can see that I masked out part of the shots here, part of the shots there, in order to just sort of clean things up and, and help the layers to, to blend more smoothly together, to, to sort of keep this area here more open and clear, um, uh, to eliminate some distraction from you know, other parts um, like that. 
you know, just to sort of simplify things and actually pare things down. So actually, even though it seems like I'm I'm creating a really crazy busy shot, actually a lot of what I do is is paring things down to simplify and make it a little clearer. Um, same example here, I, by eliminating the mask, you can see that I, I simplified things, uh, removed some of the kite busyness over here, you know. So um, that pretty much covers everything that you need to see. This, that, that shows you pretty much the whole process from end to beginning, so to speak. And um, I hope this helps you to see a little bit more of, of my process and gives you some ideas about how you might mess around with things yourself. And I would encourage you to do that. So if you get into this kind of photography, it's really fun because um, there's a lot of ways to, to mess around with colors and layers and masks um, and be creative. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that I've shown you here, uh, ask and I'll try to answer them. Thanks.